what's it like to be back at a place, a new place, but you know the same major um, as you claimed victory at last year? Yeah, it's definitely a little bit different um, coming to a new state, new course, um, a little bit different preparation, but um, it's awesome to kind of see my face everywhere. Um, it's really special. 2022 was quite the season for you and really jump-started at this major championship. When you think about that week, what stands out the most? Um, I think really just my hard work coming into it. Um, I wasn't hitting the ball or putting very good the week before and weeks coming up to it, I didn't have a solid start to the season. So um, I was really just trying to go into the tournament last year and try and figure it out. And um, I started hitting the ball really well, probably the best I've ever hit it. Um, and came out on top. What were some of the emotions you felt? I mean, how much did that, you know, kind of jumpstart, like I said, jumpstart the rest of the season that was last year? I think it was just like a relief. Um, I had come so close in multiple tournaments the couple of years before um, to finally get it, get the job done and win a tournament, let alone a major. It was really special and um, jumpstarted the really good rest of the season. And before I open it up to the crew behind me, uh, last night was the champion's dinner with a course semi-prepared mm -hmm. by your influence. Uh, take us through what last night was like for you. And um, I know we talked a little bit off camera about the mac and cheese portion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that was my request was mac and cheese, my favorite food. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely awesome. Um, Thomas Keller did a great job, great food. Um, absolutely amazing. Um, I think just... The way that Chevron puts that on for us, it's it's really special for all of the champions, and it's definitely something to look forward every year. What was it like seeing some of those past champions from multiple years back? Yeah, I mean, I hadn't met some of them, so to be able to see the history of this tournament, it was pretty exciting to get to talk to them and um, see where their heads were at, too. All right, open it up, Steve. Uh, Jen, what is the difference in this golf course and where, and where you want in the desert? Um, I think the biggest thing is probably the length of the golf course. It's it's really long. I would say in the desert we were hitting pretty short clubs in. Um, all of the par fives were reachable. Um, most of them are reachable out here, but I think we're going to have a lot of long irons into the par fours, and the greens are definitely a lot trickier versus in the desert. They were pretty flat and pretty easy. Were you able to reach 18? Uh, not from the back tee. Um, hopefully they move it up like they did in the desert. Um, but uh, it's definitely a really long hole as well. And conditions-wise, obviously you're in the desert. It's a lot of dry heat. Um, what do you anticipate being the conditions out here? I mean, I think it's going to be a lot windier. Texas is generally windy, though, so you kind of expect that. Um, obviously the humidity ball... The ball doesn't quite go as far as I feel like here versus in the desert, so that also contributes to the length. And this is the first week you've come back where you're defending somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, what has that been like, that, that entire experience? Um, pretty different. I, it's been different for me as well because usually I play before the week of a major and I took la last week off, came here early. Um, so I think that's kind of helped with the transition of trying to figure out everything that I need to do before I can step foot on the golf course. Um, and that's probably the biggest change for me. When, when did you arrive here? Uh, Saturday night. And what, what, what kind of things did you do to acclimate? I think just giving me giving myself that extra day um, on Sunday when really nobody was out here to just focus on my game and focus on trying to get to know the golf course um, that was a big thing for me on Sunday a quiet day yeah actually, yeah, yeah. What, what was your first impression of the dock and uh, since you've done the leap before would would you do it here uh, I guess we'll see what comes down to it I'm not really sure I think there might be snakes in the water here so <laughs> might be a little interesting <laughs> So I've heard. Thanks. You've been excelling this year as far as greens and regulation. And I know you got four eagles and you're talking about hitting long irons and everything. Does this course kind of suit your game? Yeah, I think I'm one of the longer players on tour. I hit my long irons and hybrids pretty well. I think that's kind of a normal thing for the LPGA, though, is we all hit our long clubs really good and have really good short games. So I think it'll be a really good test of golf, just a lot different than the desert. You kind of touched on this, you know, as far as being the defending champion. 
But what's it like, though, you know, you're the defending champion, but it's like, wait a minute, this is a whole different course. Mm -hmm. I mean, just so much, everything is different. Yeah, I think it's definitely different. Um, obviously, it's a first thing for this championship, but it's also normal for the British Open, KPMG, and the U.S. Open. They change every year. You're defending a different course every year. Obviously, I haven't won those, but um, it's the same process as that kind of thing. So you just kind of take it and um, try and prepare the best you can on this golf course. Okay, final question for me. You know, you took a few weeks off. Is there anything specifically you were working on? Um, not really. I took a, a little bit of the first week off. I had a cold um, in L.A., so tried to recover from that and really just get my body ready working out and um, just getting ready for this week on and off the golf course. Thank you. Jennifer, could you compare yourself as a player the Tuesday before last Chevron Championship to today? Um, I think I was in a, in a bit of a panic um, last year, actually. I was struggling hitting the ball, so had um, a little bit of a panic calling my swing coach, working with the ping rep, trying to figure out what was going wrong with my swing and um, hitting the ball. And I would say I'm a little bit more relax relaxed this year, feel like I have my feet under me and ready to go. Do you remember when those calls were about trying to fix your swing before last year's tournament? Um, it was actually on Wednesday morning when that all happened. Uh, miraculously turned around really good. So, One of the things you mentioned last year was it was nice to hear your name being chanted. Do you feel like you've gotten more of that in the years since? And if so, what has that felt like? Um, yeah, I think so a little bit. Um, I, I think just in general, people being from Colorado, I have a really good support system. And that was one of the biggest things at Mission Hills was everybody was calling my name as well as calling Go Colorado. And that's just really special to me. And I think that's kind of continued throughout last year and through this year. I just want to ask a couple of dinner questions. <laughs> so for the menu, you, you basically get to make one request? Uh, yeah, you just make one request and then, I mean, he's a famous chef, so he kind of goes around that. Okay, so what's your favorite mac and cheese like from back in the day and and how did the famous chef do it differently <laughs> actually my favorite mac and cheese is um the blue box craft mac and cheese still to this day it's mm -hmm. amazing um but i would say most of the time like fancy mac and cheese is a little bit too rich for me but he did an amazing job it was not too rich it was obviously not mac craft mac and cheese but it was amazing it was really good and what was your second favorite thing on the on the menu um, I can't remember what it was called, but it was um, the appetizer. It was like a little bit of potato and then um, something on top with some cream on it. And it, it was, I probably would never think to order it, but it was absolutely amazing. Thank you. Adam, I know you're on the call. Uh, if you'd like to unmute and ask a question. Oh, I'm currently not hearing you. Just a second, Adam. Oh, no. Something with the speaker real quick. I promise Adam has a question for you. I can hear his microphone going up and down. Not hear it, but see it. Try again, Adam, if that's okay. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right. Um, sorry, Jennifer. Just curious, on paper, it looked like, obviously, last year's major win, uh, you finally took one across the finish line, you got over the hump, and it looked like it kind of opened the floodgates for you. Is that an accurate way of describing what that win meant for you? Yeah, I think um, after the win at Chevron, I think it really just made me comfortable that I could actually do it. I think I was a little bit... Um, I had taken second a couple of times in the years prior and a little bit discouraged on um, actually reaching the finish line. So um, to come through and actually win was amazing. 
And just one quick follow-up. I'm curious as well about kind of the historical significance of, you know, the win last year and everything that happened. I, I know you talked a few minutes ago about how, you know, time moves on and on, just like the other majors on the schedule, sometimes you go to different venues. But, you know, as as you're looking farther and farther in, in the rear view of that big win, given the the ending of it all at that particular golf course, does that still mean something to you to be the last champion there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to have that is really special to me. Um, obviously, growing up, I always wanted to be able to take that leap into Poppy's Pond. Um, and I loved Mission Hills, being able to play there the couple of years before as well. Um, it was just a really um, cool place for me and where I felt really comfortable. So to be able to say that I won there and be the last champion there is really special. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Good luck this week. Thank you. And then one more for me before we close it up here. Um, but I would like to know who your favorite person to talk to last night at the Champions Dinner was. If there was maybe a new story or maybe a past tradition that you heard of for the first time that stuck out to you. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't, I mean, going into it, like, I've, I obviously know who the people are, so I didn't necessarily talk to them about um, their experiences, but I think... Um, one of the biggest conversations I had actually was with Pat Hurst, the Solheim cap captain last year. Um, just catching up on life. Um, it's really great to hear from her and see her again. So, I love that. I yeah. know that that was so special to you to be on that team. And yeah. um, what was it like kind of seeing, you know, a lot of those past champions that we don't necessarily see out, out here as much as we see at, you know, big events like this? It's really special. And um, obviously it was my first time last year or last night, but um, to hear from them, Julie Inkster spoke and um, talked about how it was so special to see everybody again um, after every year because they get to see each other and that's pretty much when they get to see each other. So I'm looking forward to that in the future, um, just being able to catch up every year like that. It's really special. That. Well, thank you, Jennifer, and best of luck this week. Thank you.